starting off with just a few foundational level questions. The first being, how do you even define this word longevity? It's a word that gets thrown around a lot, means different things to different people. I think it'd be nice just to be like for this conversation to anchor what we're talking about. How do you define longevity? Yeah, I, I don't, um, I don't make an argument that my definition is the best definition. Uh, but I agree with the idea that whenever someone is talking about it, um, it's worth asking them what they mean by it. And it's also why I tend to bristle at the, um, at the association with longevity, because it, you know, if someone says, Oh, do you, you know, are you a longevity doctor or something like that? I have no idea if they know what longevity means according to my definition, which again is not to say it's the right definition, but it's the lens through which I think about it. And therefore everything I talk about, any question I answer will be through the lens. So, um, so the way I think about it, and I suspect the way some others do as well, is that uh, longevity is, well, it's a function. Uh, I think, so again, I tend to think of things mathematically made up of two vectors. And one of these vectors is lifespan. And one of these vectors is health span. And both of these vectors are necessary to, you know, demonstrate the function of longevity. Now, one of these vectors is much easier to understand because it is, um, it is discrete, it is binary, um, and it is objective. And that is the lifespan vector. So there are some edge cases, but for the most part, you are alive or you are dead. And we think of that through the lens of death certificate death. Um, Again, we could talk about an edge case. You can have an individual who is brain dead, but who is being kept alive. Um, and, and we could debate whether that person is dead or alive. But I think for most people, there's very little confusion about what it means to be alive or dead. And notice that lifespan says nothing about the quality of a person's life. We'll save that for a second. Um, but in a nutshell, that is lifespan. It is to be, to be respiring or not to be respiring. Um, and it is, again, one of the vectors of, of longevity. So um, in as much as we want to increase longevity, we presumably want to have something to do with increasing lifespan. The second vector that makes up this uh, longevity function is the health span vector. This is far more complicated to explain. Um, it is far more subjective. Uh, it is analog as opposed to digital, meaning it is not sort of discrete on off. It is, you know, variable. And um, it also has three components in the way that I think about it. So one of those is a physical component, one of them is a cognitive component, and one of those is an emotional component. Now, in the first version of Outlive, when I wrote it, or maybe it was the second version, but not the version that got published. I, I went to great lengths to describe that the cardiorespiratory death, the, the sort of, you know, I'm not respiring death certificate death as type one death. And then I went into great machinations to talk about the three types of decline in health span as physical, cognitive, and emotional death. And I think for probably good reason, everybody, uh, the publisher and, and Bill, everybody really pushed back on that. And they thought it was a little too morbid to talk about physical death as, you know, the, the, the death of your exoskeleton and cognitive decline. And I think they were right. I think that death was probably too strong a word there. But my point was that um, all of those things can be robbed of a person. And even though they're still technically alive, their quality of life has been sapped. So let's not think of it that way. Let's think of it as you have these three sub vectors of the vector health span. And um, each of those has, you know, there are ways that we can we can try to quantify them. Um, and um, but ultimately I think people will have their own subjective assessment of what it means to be physically healthy or what it means to be cognitively healthy or what it means to be emotionally healthy. Um, I think another thing that's worth pointing out here is that two of those three inevitably decline with age. 
So the physical component of health span, which I'll define in some detail in a moment, and the cognitive component of health span, they, they very predictably decline with age. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody's decline at the same rate. And that doesn't mean that for everybody, the decline reaches a level that is quote unquote pathological, but it simply means, and I was thinking about this today in the gym, actually, I was like, wow, it is really so obvious to me with each passing day that I am completely past my prime physically and cognitively. I mean, I am, and I, and I've also accepted the fact like I will never again be as physically strong, fit, flexible, free of pain, like pick your metrics that all make up physical uh, health span. I will never again reach the pinnacles that I had reached in my late teens and 20s. And similarly, you know, cognitively, um, you know, I'm, I'm basically a moron compared to the person I used to be uh, in terms of processing speed, problem solving, just raw intellectual horsepower. Um, and, 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 you know, those things are going to decline even further. Um, now, there is more nuance to this. Um, because there are certain things physically today that I think I actually do better than I did before. In other words, I've, you know, you, 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 you take advantage of the fact that as you're getting, you know, less explosive, less powerful, well, you can still kind of maintain strength. Um, and if you learn to move more intelligently, you can actually become more effective. And similarly, as our intelligence transitions from, a more fluid form when we're young to a more crystallized experiential form when we're older, um, we, we, you know, we still have remarkable ability to contribute, but uh, there's no denying that on some of the prime levers against which you would evaluate these, we're in a state of decline. Conversely, <clears throat> the third part of, uh, health span, which is emotional health, it actually doesn't really tie to age much at all. Uh, depending on how you evaluate it, it almost seems to have a U-shaped curve, um, not a you know really big obvious U, but kind of a dip in 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 I think statistically probably the late forties, um, and then a gradual rising again. So one of the things that I always try to remind myself and, and, and then re remind my patients is this is something we can really look forward to provided we do the work, right? Is that, you know, I can be emotionally better off in a decade than I am today. And I am certainly better off today than I was a decade ago. So, um, I would say that that is at the highest level, how I describe longevity. And therefore, when a patient comes to me and says, um, you know, I'm interested in longevity, I want to make sure that what they're interested in is what I understand, because there are many other definitions of longevity out there. And if your definition of longevity is I want to live to be 200, um, I, I wouldn't obviously be able to help you. Um, so the way I think about it is longevity means how do we live longer? And I, I think that means, you know, years longer, a decade longer. It doesn't mean a doubling of lifespan. And how do we prevent the um, sort of, well, I think a better way to describe it is how do we reduce the rate of decline of health span? That, that would probably be uh, kind of the most, the most operative way to talk about it. So that's obviously very verbose. And that's why I think it's not something that you know, you explain very quickly to somebody. Um, but given that that's the purpose of what we're talking about today, I think it's, it's probably worth going into that detail.